do 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 do. <laughs> this might be a tough one to do in a nutshell. Tough one. Talk about the denotation and connotations of specific terms related to field theory. Well, then we're talking about fields. But do fields partake of these particular things, either in whole or in part? You have to define induction, propagation, perturbation, waves, particles, movement, and transmission. Well, we know we have transmission lines outside of the front or the back of your house. We think we know what movement is. Movement is like when someone like Joe Schmuck moves from point A to point B with a given vector over a period of T, time. So that must be movement. Everybody knows what particles are, at least everybody thinks they know what particles are. Of course, modern science is full of bullshit. They think everything is particles because they're atomistic. Because modern science never defined the most important word in the universe, which is fields. Maxwellian field equations never define a field. They only describe a field in extrapolation as a result with a given vector over a period of time with resultant effect. That effect being measured in joules, watts, volts, amps, so on and so forth. Perturbation. That kind of surprises me. I grew up with this word reading ancient metaphysics and philosophy. Everybody knows what it means to perturb somebody, kind of like a little pathetic teenager doing a wet willy in somebody's ear. You know what that is? You're like flicking... You know, like some little pathetic kid uh, flicking snot at somebody else in school. You perturb somebody, you piss them off. It'd be a state of change, right? We all know what perturbation means, right? We piss something off. We actually change its state. It makes someone go from happy to angry. That'd be a good analogy because that's where we get the word perturb from. Propagation. Interesting. A lot of people don't know what propagation means or induction. What does fields have to do with these things? Waves. Everybody think we know what waves are. The favorite thing, here we go, let's draw some EM. Of course, this is not what EM is. Of course, uh, light or electromagnetic radiation is a longitudinal pulse perturbation, a set frequency, a wavelength, with transverse electrical and magnetic components. But waves, waves of what? Waves don't exist. Waves are not what something is. A wave is not a noun. A wave is a transient verb. A wave defines the attribute, attribute, attribute of X. Okay, something is waving. Well, what's waving? That's the question. It should be asked. Science loves to talk about waves. Oh, well, a wave, a waves, a wave, then it interacts with another wave. Waves, waves, kind of like ocean crashing water, right? Waves or electromagnetic waves. As I, uh, my favorite one is the WPD, which is the biggest bullshit saying in modern science I've ever heard. I hear it all the time, every day, every second. Seems like wave particle duality. Light kind of acts like a wave, and sometimes it acts like a particle, and it's a duality. Well, since Mother Nature is not a crazy hooker on crack. Okay? There's no such thing as a duality. A duality by denotation from the ancient Greeks and the ancient Indians is something that is contradictory. But there are no contradictions in nature because Mother Nature is not a stupid cross-eyed hooker on crack. There are no dualities in nature. There's no such thing as a wave-particle duality. Light is not a wave. A wave doesn't even exist. There's no such goddamn thing as a wave. Excuse my language. A wave is not what something is. A wave is what something does. Okay? A wave is not a principle. Actually, apply Platonic logic, even Aristotelian logic. What something is, in this case, a noun. Okay? We define a noun by its attribute. If you want to say that the principle of the noun is also its attribute, this, of course, is what the ancient Greeks referred to as the aoristos dias, because there's no difference from the principle of light as a noun as opposed to what light does, which is waves with a set frequency, right? But what something does is not what something is. Interestingly enough, if we were to apply this sort of logic to more profound, palpable things like Bob, if Bob only exists when he's walking down the street, okay, there's Bob, he's walking at five miles per hour, MPH down the street. That's Bob. 
But if Bob stops walking and Bob vanishes, then how do we actually define Bob? There's Bob. Well, there's Bob, but we only know Bob when he moves. Same thing with light. There's no such thing as light from the pure Platonic Pythagorean sense because what we define as light is what we actually define as light doing. We actually only define light in attribution. So we actually have things upside down. A wave is not a thing, in short. There's no such goddamn thing as a wave because waves don't exist. Sure they do. No, they don't. A wave is what something does, not what something is. And we call this waves. Waves. We call this the fallacy, fallacy of attribute, attribute reification. What's reification mean? Reification is kind of like this. Here's a really simple example of reification. Little Bobby is uh, smoking crack and he tells everybody he saw a uh, gold leprechaun and he tries to reify. Is he sure they exist? And everybody stares at Bobby because they know he's a crack smoker. Bobby tries to tell everybody he did see a gold leprechaun, but everybody knows Bobby's full of crap. Talk about attribute reification. We're trying to actually reify stuff that doesn't exist. So, waves are not fields. Waves don't even exist. They are said of other things. These are in reference to attributes of, of X. Okay? So, that can't involve fields. We have to define what a field is. I know a lot of people don't know what induction or propagation or perturbation is. Actually, actually, how do we define that? Propagation, spreading out, either increasing a number or dilution over a larger area or medium. Mirroring duplication through perturbation. Right, like sound waves and water waves. Like we have propagation. We have the still waters of a pond. Right? Right? Pretty simple. You drop a rock into the pond, you create a propagating effect where the splash of the stone causes propagation wave formation. I said wave is not a thing. Waves of what? Waves of water. We've got propagation which is spreading. Sound waves. Waves of what? Well, they're perturbations. We actually replace the word waves with perturbation. Well, how do we explain waves in space? There's nothing to perturb out in space. We know that like we can transmit signals, bounce them off of satellites, and transmit signals to the moon, and Voyager probes, and it's like, what the hell is being perturbed in space? Here we're actually linking propagation and perturb. What the hell is being perturbed in space, one, that is causing a propagation of like a transmission in space? Yeah, because to have a perturbation and a propagation, we actually have to have something that's propagated. Well, space is empty. What do? It is a really easy way. There's a thousand ways to stump a scientist for physics. Tell me what's being perturbed or propagated in space. Well, it's energy. Energy of what? Energy is undefined. Well, they're waves. Well, a wave doesn't exist. So what again is propagating or perturbating in space? Not, kind of like the same analogy of dropping the stone in the pond. Say I transmit a 5-watt signal from a Yagi antenna directed at the moon. Actually, I do like 100-watt uh, signals. This is called moon bounce in um, ham radio. What you'll do is you'll talk to somebody else over the line of sight on the other side of the earth. What you'll do is you'll actually... This is how this shit works, by the way. I think a lot of you don't know what this is. It's called moon bounce. Here we got the Earth. Here we have the moon up here. You're over here, and you want to talk to someone over here, but you only have line of sight. Now, you can use the ionosphere, but in UHF and VHF, the only way you can do UHF, VHF transmission, since you don't have a line of sight between you here and uh, whoever the hell over here, and the other side, that you do moon bounce. You'll actually bounce a Yagi signal off the moon over there. So what the hell is being perturbed? and propagating in space. Yeah? This is easy. There's a thousand ways to stump a physicist or a scientist. Well, it's really simple. What the hell is uh, propagating and perturbating out there is the same as our water analogy. It's called the ether. That's right. Don't care how you spell it. Don't care if you call it zero-point energy. Don't care if you call it counter space. I don't care what the hell you call it. Zero-point, ether, the, uh, 
Doesn't matter what you call it, because Mother Nature doesn't give a shit what stupid human beings call it. It's the ether. Any other name? This is a rose by any other name. Smell is sweet. It is the ether. Correct. So propagation. Something's actually diluting out over large areas. It's not like dropping a stone in the water. Propagation. Perturbation. We already described what perturbation is, essentially, but waves don't exist. So what's the perturbation? This is only said of the attributional things of a medium. We actually have to have a medium for things to perturbate. Okay? How are you going to perturbate a signal in a total vacuum, like a radio transmission or a magnetic field, for example? You know, what happens if you place a powerful magnet inside of a bell jar and you suck everything out and you create a near total vacuum? Where the, what the hell is uh, propagating? You know, the magnetic field, which is extending outside of the vacuum sealed chamber. Yeah, yeah, it's the same stuff. It's the ether. Right? This is. Let's get a little bit more specific here. You know what Cartesian coordinates are. Anything that actually partakes of space or magnitude has a x, y Cartesian coordinate. Well, there it is. Talk about non-Cartesian, non-Cartesian energy, NCE. The ether, the perturbation of that, right? So, what about induction? Induction is a little bit harder to define. I'm, anybody that knows anything about electricity knows what induction is. It means to induce an energy state or the dissipation of energy. The rate of induction to inflate something with a different energy state, a change in energy. Actually, how you accomplish that, of course, is a matter of another discussion. Of course, we already know what particles are. Fundamentally, there's only one particle. We know that neutrons turn into protons if they're free after 17 minutes. Every little atom is a subatomic, excuse me, is an atomic little dynamo. It creates a uh, electromagnetic shell. Actually, all atoms are measured in picometers between their nucleus and their outer valences of energy. Every atom is just nothing other than a little atomic dynamo. So I don't think we need to define particles. We can talk about that endlessly, however. Movement. Movement. We're trying to talk about fields here. Fields. So... Fields are not waves, but all science defines fields in the presence, I mean, excuse me, in the, uh, in the uh, reification of waves, but waves are not a thing. We can't say waves are fields and fields are waves because waves don't exist. Everything is fields and fields are not particles too, so we can actually eliminate this shit out immediately. That's the wonderful thing about particles. They don't pertain to fields. Everything is a field, and fields are sure the F not particles, and waves don't exist. Oh, damn, because waves are not a thing. Waves are what things do. I mean, how bloody obvious is that? Humanity is so intellectually unevolved that we don't realize that. At least most people don't realize that. So, movement or transmission. Phenomena has a Cartesian flux. Fields never move. Even magnetism is a Poincaré disk model of a field perturbation. Poincaré disk model, it takes a long time to actually define what that is. Basically, it's a holographic paradigm in simplex, except a lot more logical explanation of the holographic paradigm. Look that up. It's called Poincaré disk model of projective geometry. But nothing's moving. It's inertia retardation. Actually, what I define as the ether is also what... Now, modern connotation of inertia is completely different. Like a car traveling down the road, you hit the brakes, you have a forward inertia. The original definition of inertia inertia is no different than what we call the ether or counter space. My handwriting sucks. I'm leaning over the chalkboard here. Right? Yeah, my handwriting does suck. The inertia, the original definition, i.e. the original denotation of inertia. So movement, nothing's moving. It's an inertia retardation, which is exactly what magnetism is. By the way, magnetism spawns up natively from the premise of Mother Nature with the equation that I discovered, which is a secret found in Plato's Republic 509D, which belonged to the Pythagoreans, 509D to 511, called the divided line section, and it's this. It's an expression. It's 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3. You think, well, that's a number. That number is 0 0.23606. It's not a number. This is an expression. 1 over this. This is, of course, always meant an expression. No, it's a number. No, it's an expression. That's the native Aristostias of inertia giving way to magnetism. Because magnetism is the dielectric field. So, transmission. This is where we have a hard time because people don't understand. 
Okay, we think we've defined movement. Okay. But in the case of a field, just like our Bob analogy, if Bob stops walking down the street and Bob vanishes, if we can only define Bob by Bob doing something, does Bob really exist? What we're doing is creating the fallacy once again of attribute reification wherein movement is no different fundamentally from the BS stupid humans call waves. So it's not movement, it's not waves, because nothing's moving. It's the same reason there's no such thing as a speed of light. Sure, speed of light's well established. No, it's not. Everything is capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity. The thing we call the speed of light is actually the rate of induction of the ether against itself. Let me repeat that again. It's called the rate of induction. There's no such thing as the speed of light because light slows down about 30% when it goes through glass. And without breaking the law of conservation of energy, which of course modern physics doesn't completely comprehend that at all. Actually, they don't comprehend it at all. That light speeds back up after it leaves glass. It does? Yeah. That's actually another great way to stump a physicist is ask him how light, without breaking the law of conservation of energy, which no scientist would ever do, how does light speed back up after it leaves glass? Oh, that'll really piss him off. Well, actually, the explanation that they give is, oh, well, light springs off of the glass. It springs off of the glass? Really? That's the explanation you want to give for how light speeds back up. Anyway, let's get on to transmission. So, like, passing along matter or energy from one subject to another, transmission. Like uh, transmitting the cold to somebody else. You know, like Bobby gave Susie a cold. He transmitted a cold to her. Um, got the flu. We're transmitting the flu. He transmitted the money from bank A to bank B, i.e. transmission or a signal, i.e. false or conversion, say from a battery into electromagnetic uh, radiation into an antenna is induction, is a state and energy conversion. This is transformation or modality converter. Okay? So fields are not transmitted. Well, sure they do. You got transmission lines out in the street. Even transmission lines are not transmitting anything. They are field perturbation guidance structures. How do you know this fact? It's like there's something traveling inside the transmission lines? The easiest way to disprove that is actually don't do this. You'll, you'll, you'll electrocute yourself. You can stick up a, a coil on the end of a wooden pole and hook that to a battery or a voltmeter and get within about five feet to the transmission lines and you'll start... This is actually how some people steal energy out in the boonies. What they'll do, and some people get electrocuted doing this, they'll stick up a coil up near the transmission lines with no contact whatsoever, the field, which is around, because the transmission lines act as a conductive, a reflective, excuse me, they act as dielectric reflectors, and they also act as guidelines for the magnetic field. They go down the power lines, but there's actually actually passing through the cables themselves. Transmission lines aren't transmitting anything. They're field perturbation guidance structures. The transmission lines are literally guidance forms. Do you think if I came up with this myself? No. Do you know who said that? Eric Dollard, Nikola Tesla, James Cork Maxwell, Oliver Heaviside, Charles Proteus Steinmetz. These people are collectively the gods of electrical theory, and that is exactly what they said. Okay? Before you start calling me a kook, you're going to start calling the kook of the people that actually invented 100% of the world's uh, um, electrical grid and structures used all over the entire world. Fields do not transmit, nor do they move. So what actually defines a field? What are these terms, since waves and movement are incorrect? Okay, movement is said of something, a subject. Wave is said of an attribute of a subject. So neither waves, nor movement, nor transmission applies to fields. Everything is fields, and fields are not particles. We also eliminated our particles. Okay? Induction. We already defined induction, but that doesn't define a field. One thing that actually defines a field is propagation and perturbation, but this propagation or perturbation is the inertia against itself, or ether. doesn't matter what the hell you want to call it. does not matter what the hell. Kind of like dropping a stone in the water. So we can say propagation and perturbation. Maxwellian field equations only reify these and make them more palpable by stating what they are over a vector, over a period of time with a given result, like joules, watts, volts, seconds, so on and so forth. So all this stuff that we think that involves fields like transmission, movement, particles, and waves, no, absolutely not. 
Waves are not things. How many times do I actually have to say that? Waves are not things. They're certainly not fields. Sure they are. Fields. Fields. They are? Are they really? No, they're not. See, this is the biggest word. This is in the ancient uh, Greek word for this. I need to look it up. Nobody cares about ancient Greek, right? There's even a book written on this. Kora. The word, yeah. Kora. Field. Field. This term right here is the 800-pound gorilla that sits on the heads and shits on it, too, of modern physicists and scientists. But modern physicists and scientists are not true scientists in the platonic sense. What they are are mathematicians. Mathematicians don't believe in fields. You know why mathematicians... Here's the really important shit. This is the... Because the important stuff is really simple, but people don't understand it because it's beyond their comprehension. The reason why they're not scientists is because they're mathematicians, and what do mathematicians have an issue with? Mathematicians have an issue with anything that can't be counted, categorized, and pigeonholed, like atoms. Right? Because fields are not particles, they're not waves. Fields are only defined over a period of time with a given vector and a result or effect. Okay? But that's no different than the uh, fact that you could never define Bob. Okay? Bob represents a field. See, Bob by himself, what's a field in itself, of itself, by itself? Modern science has never done that. But science will gladly tell you accurately that Bob is so-and-so when he's moving. But if Bob only exists when he's moving or doing something with a vector and an effect over a period of time, can we actually say that Bob is anything substantial? No. Modern scientists and physicists are mathematicians, and the cult of mathematics is that if you can't count the shit, then the shit don't exist. I hate to be crude and cuss like that, but that is the premise of what a mathematician is. Mathematician is a bean counter. Someone that believes that the shit don't exist unless you can count it. Right? This is also why the ancient Greek true scientists were... Well, I used the wrong side of my marker here. Were meta... Well, my handwriting sucks. Metaphysicians. I use a... I'm really good on the keyboard. Metaphysicians. This word. Meta plus physics. Metaphysicians. But there's no branch of modern science or uh, modern scientists that has anything to do with uh, metaphysics. However, the ancients were only interested in physics for the sole sake of having a better comprehension of absolute reality, which is metaphysics. Because there's two types of reality, just like two flip sides of a coin. And this is the most important shit. Excuse me, I'm cussing again. But sometimes you have to emphasize stuff by cussing. The most important shit to understand is what the ancient Greek gods of wisdom knew, is that just like a coin, which has two sides, a head and a tail, the uh, head and a tail, here we go, head and a tail, there's a coin, right? It's the ultimate reality of uh, Mother Nature, or the uh, cosmos nuitos and the cosmos atitos, actually those are the two flip sides of the coin. Ultimate reality is both physics and metaphysics. Okay? The only way you could have a correct understanding of the nature of reality is physics and metaphysics, because both are just opposite sides of the coin. Either sides of the coins, heads or tails, are irrelevant of, and this would be where the ether is. You know, a coin, at least coins used to be made out of silver. Okay? The silver in our absolute coin is the, is the damn ether. Here we'll talk about the head side of the coin, okay, which would be the physics. You have the uh, mathematicians, or I call them the measure baiters. Let's repeat that word again measure baiter. Okay? Here we go measure baiter. Head side of the coin, we got the tail side of the coin. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hope you liked this video. Have a good one, and catch you later.